thank you for joining us um, this Saturday morning for our regular Wellbeing at Home online event. And as I always say, lovely and heartwarming to see all your familiar faces and names. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, these events uh, are really about empowering you with information, information so that you could stay happy and healthy and really take control of your own health. Um, we publish all of our past complimentary events on YouTube under our um, YouTube channel under Wellbeing Escapes or on our Wellbeing at Home website. Um, and uh, I know many of you have subscribed to that because you get a um, notification of the events from that um, and we have some great content on there on various subjects we've done lots of previous um, uh, sessions in fact over three years now I can't believe it uh, so if you are watching this on YouTube can I please ask you to leave us a little like um, below and write a comment as it helps us reach a wider group of people and we want to spread the well-being so to speak so the more people who can have access to this great content the better um, and if you're watching through the website, because we publish it through the website as well, uh, there's a button so you can leave a review. So please do so. Um, the experts we have coming on give up their time to help um, us spread the well-being. Uh, so it would be great to show them some appreciation just with a little comment or um, a like. So for today's event, we welcome Sunita Passi who is a renowned specialist in Ayurvedic medicine. She's an author, she's a lecturer, she's a TEDx speaker, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, I, I, I really don't know when she sleeps, to be honest, but um, she joins us to talk all things Ayurveda. And in fact, I met Sunita 18 years ago when I launched Wellbeing Escapes and, and she was bringing Ayurveda, Ayurveda to people through her Trijectosha brand. Um, and I really think we were both pioneers then. I mean, Ayurveda is becoming a little bit more popular recently, but then it, it was it was kind of the unknown. Um, but Sunita really is an expert in her field and she's been doing this for over 20 years and she has trained over a thousand Ayurvedic practitioners. That's quite an accolade. Sunita, congratulations and uh, welcome Thank you. You. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, do you want Thank to you just tell me. us? No, of course, it's lovely to have you here. Can you tell us what brought you to this world of Ayurveda? Because you didn't always do that, right? You were an investigative journalist, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I started off life in journalism. I did my master's in investigative journalism. So I think I've always been a part of, of truth in some way. Um, and uh, my company, I actually then um, started working for an agency. Um, I was writing about business and um, and traveling all over the world. So I jump into a country. I'd spend four months in that country compiling a business report. It's just a really, really wonderful way to expand my knowledge, understanding of the world, understanding of people, horizons. Um, I personally started to feel a bit more, you know, more of a, a deep spiritual shift. And, um, and I was blessed. My company actually sent me to India. And, um, and it, was, it was where I was in India that I started to have breakthroughs. So I remember walking through, any of you who have been to India, you'll know Hansel Plaza in Delhi, which is this fabulous shopping center. And um, you know, most people there are buying saris and ornaments and amazing carpets. And there was this little meditation shop in the corner. And, um, I guess you know the teachers there when you're when you're seeking. I walk into this little meditation shop, started talking to the meditation teacher, and um, whatever he said, just I just resonated with it. The following week, I jumped on my first retreat. So um, that was a kind of a deep dive into into breath work and into really starting how powerful these tools and techniques actually are. Um, I'd already started to bring the yoga in, you know, when I lived in, in Holland, I'd already started to do what we now consider 
um, uh, um, you know, quite a, a vibrant type of yoga. Um, so I, I'd already started to do that and I was already getting the benefits. Anyway, and they then sent me to Mumbai and an hour away from Mumbai, there was this ashram that I started to go to regularly. And it was actually there and in Pune um, that I started to have Ayurvedic treatment. And I just really, you know, as I um, as I experienced the this body work, it's, it's energy based for those of you know, those of you who've had Ayurvedic body work, you'll know. Um, I started to real feel real shift, you know, in energy patterns. Um, I felt that I could um, look more um, closely at things from the past that maybe weren't serving me anymore. It was just so cathartic. And, uh, and from that, I, I really start, I felt that I was able to start to make more choices. So it was a very sort of deep dive um, into the body work, into the meditation. And um, I felt that I really had a, you know, a real strong calling to want to learn more. So I actually took a year off Stella. I started my training in Kerala in Southern India. I know you know Kerala very well. And, um, and, and that's really where the seed was sown. Um, and eventually when I came back to the UK, I moved straight to London, set a clinic up in London in 2008, launched the training academy. So, um, you know, from that time, I continued my training, trained as a practitioner and in many other, you know, modal. Um, but really, I think, you know, our, our life experiences, they, it's through these experiences that, 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 that shape us. Uh, and, um, you know, when, when I look back now, I feel like it's like all the dots start to join up. Yeah, and um, with age, doesn't it? When you can look back. And yeah. see, uh, I think when you're in your 20s and in your 30s, sometimes you're like, look, what, what, you know, things aren't going the way I want them to go. But then when you get older and you look back, oh, I hope I haven't lost you here. Um, Sunita, I think we've lost her. Is everyone else? Can everyone yes, else? Oh, you're back, you're back. Sorry, you froze there for a while. Yeah, yeah, so I thought we'd lost you. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, that how you look back and then you say, oh, that happened for that reason and that happened for that reason. Um, and it's actually really interesting to me that you your awakening happened in a shopping centre in Delhi. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> of all the places, you know, you were in a shopping centre. It's quite funny. Um so, um, but you've come a long way since then, a long way, and uh, you you do so many things. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, but I did, I watched your TEDx um, speech uh, session, and I found it really, really interesting um, because you touched on a few things. There's one thing that you said that um, I, I wasn't aware of, and I, I was fascinated by that, to be honest, where you said that... Um, uh medication is the third largest killer in the united states so i mean that was news to me but but wow what a fact um and no wonder people are becoming much more interested in kind of holistic health practices like ayurveda um so i think it's timely and i think you know you did enter this world 20 years ago and you've you know you've started um you've been a pioneer in that for sure uh, but I think more and more people are, are becoming interested in, you know, ho whole holistic health practices. So, I mean, Ayurveda is really a complete philosophy, right? Health practice. Tell us, yeah. tell us. Yeah, a absolutely. Bit yeah. So in a nutshell, how I look at it, you know, Ayurveda is a Sanskrit word. So I mean, life, Veda means knowledge. It's literally the science of life. And when you study the traditional books, um, so we have certain books that we, we, we uh, when we're training um, in, in Ayurveda from certain physicians, you know, from from all those thousands of years ago. And um, and when you when you when you read these texts, you actually see that they gave us a blueprint of what humanity could look like to be happy, to live healthily, to live in harmony with nature. And actually, it's man that's taken us down a different path. Had we had we stayed aligned to those values, um, we would um, we would be living in harmony with nature, you know? So all the information that I teach, you would grow up with it. You wouldn't have to go seeking it as an adult. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I do, I, I, there, there's many things that you can do yourself. So Ayurveda, traditional, it's a traditional heal, Indian healing health system. And it's completely individualized. So when you come to, um, uh, to Ayurveda, one of the first things that you'll learn about is your constitution, your body type, your dosha, which is completely individual to you. It's also a holistic health system. So we're working on mind, body and spirit. Um, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's integrative. You know, if, if you're feeling out of sorts, it's not just something to do with the body. It's, you know, it's, it's also thinking about what you might, what might be going through your mind and also your soul, your, you know, the spiritual elements of who you are. Um, you know, in Ayurveda, much of the content and information really takes us back to, um, to you know, to, to the soul and the, and, and the magic of the soul and actually lighting our fire up at that level. And then there's a toolkit. So this is, it's, it's such a simple system actually to follow because when you look at the toolkit, the first thing is your nutrition, is your diet. So actually what am I putting in my body? And, um, you know, one of the, the, the traditional um, physicians that we, we would read, his books um, when we were training in Ayurveda is Charaka and Charaka says um, the life of all things is food and the entire world seeks food. So, you know, ultimately nutrition is, is the start of our health. It's the first thing. If anyone was, if I was working with somebody, you know, on a one-to-one -one session, first thing I would do is look at their diet. So, so what are you eating? Are there certain foods that are suitable for your constitution, not suitable for your constitution? Also, the quality of the food is really important. Where is it grown? Um, uh, you know, there, there is, as so much of the food we are um, we are consuming now um, is 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 it, you know we're, we're it mass marketed, getting it from the supermarket. So so quality has changed a lot over time. And then we've got um, if you're feeling a bit out of sorts, the first thing we do is look at your look in the kitchen see what you've got in the sense of herbs and remedies. There's so many things that you can actually make yourself. Um, even certain spices that you may cook with, we would consider herbal remedies from the Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia. Um, if you're feeling more out of sorts, then there's other you know, lifestyle too. So Ayurvedic massage is key, which is the area I'm an expert in. Um, we also, there are purification, uh, programs that you can go on. If you really feel that your body needs more of a deep dive and more of a reset, um, also education, spiritual philosophy, rituals, you know, these are all part of the toolkit, you know, when it comes to stilling the body, feeling less anxious, feeling less stressed. So Ayurveda actually is a combination of all things. All, all elements um, are integrated. Uh, and so that's why we call it a lifestyle, because, um, you know, once you once you know your your personalized program, it's literally like you've got your own bespoke self-care, you know, yeah. daily that's, routine. <laughs> that's really interesting because I think our, our approach to health, um, certainly in the Western world over the Oh, I don't know, last maybe 50 years, 100 years, it's been very homogenized. So it's kind of like one size fits all, mm. um, where whereas we are very individual and different things affect different people. And so therefore, like we'll talk about the doshas in a second, um, but I want to pick up on that, the doshas and the fact that it's like really personalizing. And we're not, you know, I find it interesting as, as brilliant as the our, our advances are in um, in our health, you know, and, and medical system. When you go to the hospital, if there's something wrong with you, it's like you're um, you're put into little silos. So, for example, you'll have um, a urologist who specializes in um I don't know what urologist specializes in <laughs> and, and neurologist that specializes in in, in nerves and urologist is uh, I think the um the uh anyway forget it I'll get it wrong but anyway we have uh you know cardiologists with the heart and all different all different specialties and you have to go to see different people and it's like not bringing it together 
you know, because you can have one part of your body which affects another yeah. part of your body. And there's and there is there is no real um uh there's no real attention put towards the effect of your emotions and your mental health can have on your physical health. And we all know that that's the case now. In fact, I was reading a study recently, this was really interesting, of um a scientist who went to India. This is many, many years ago. It's quite an old, old study, and I've forgotten his name. But they did, um, they they researched the diet of two um, different groups in, in India. They had the people from the north in India um, who had, were generally healthier and had like longer lifespans and were healthier. And then the, there was a part of, of southern India where they weren't. They had many more health issues. And what they did is they reproduced the diets and they gave them to two groups of rats um, to, to see you know, how their health affected the rats. But what they saw from that was the mental state of the rats. The rats started to turn on, the, on themselves and were more aggressive with the unhealthy food, you know, versus the, um, the, healthy, yeah. the healthy food. And again, I found that fascinating. I was like, gosh, how can food have such an effect on even your yeah. mental state and yeah. emotional state? So if you're eating badly and you're unhealthy, of course, you can become more aggressive, you can become more depressed, all those things. And then I started to think about the state of the world today. And I'm like, oh, my God, we need to clean up how everybody eats because then people can become much more... Um, uh, maybe more peaceful uh but it's it's interesting yeah. right and the fact that you talk about food but can we go to the doshas yeah yeah just just to just to add to that with the food so 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 everything you're talking about and about in ayurveda um so even just there with the food you know we've got this concept of um sattva rajas tamas sattva is actually we eat pure fresh cooked food and, and that's what we want to put more of in our body rajas probably the rats that were angry and frustrated were having too much rajasic food you know which is very very fiery and um and, and too much of it is unnecessary for your constitution and then you've got tamasic which is basically dead food which is what a lot of people in the western world are eating because we're buying processed um, meals from the from the supermarket which are being packaged up you know, in a way that, you know, just because you go into a certain supermarket and it's packaged up in a lovely way doesn't mean it's got any life in it. It's still it's still processed food that you're going to put in a microwave. And um, so, you know, we are we're inundated with marketing in the West that draws us. That actually, we're not getting the nutrients that we need um, to um, to feel healthy and vibrant and and uh, and um, the, the things that are good for us ultimately. So you know, going going back to this, the sim the simple ways really are the best. You know, buying fresh ingredients. Um, if you've got a local farm, pop to the farm where you know you can see where you can see it's being grown. Um, you know, I don't. It's it's difficult. You know, it's a great idea for us all to have our own little farmyards in the back garden but I know that's not an easy thing to do you know it's not it's also something I've not managed myself because that takes time you've got to you know air the ground the soil look after it but you can definitely find better ways to shop um and and also cooking from scratch as well is is that's you, you know these are just basic guidelines to fill your body up with nourishing food um, so doshas, you were going to ask me about doshas. Yeah, yeah. We're going to, so that's kind of the, the power of food, you know, which seems to be uh, prevalent in all the ancient health systems. Um, but coming back to the individualization, so the one size doesn't fit all kind of thing. So some people can tolerate certain types of foods and the others can't. And I think Ayurveda puts that into more of a dosha type system. Right? Maybe let's just explain to people what that means. Yeah, that's it. So, so you all, so dosha is your, it's literally your body type, your constitution. Um, in Ayurveda, we've got in this system, we've got three specific 
brochures. So we've got Vata. Vata, Sanskrit word, literally means what moves. So if you think about it as a moving energy, if, if, if any of you here today find yourself moving, could be that you've got a strong Vata constitution. Pitta, Pitta literally, um, so Vata is predominantly made of the um, ether and the air element. So that's another aspect uh, that, that before we get to the doshas, we actually consider how we live with the five elements, ether, air, fire, water, earth, and then the doshas of a nation of two or more. Um, then uh, we have pitta. Pitta literally means what cooks. It's predominantly fire and also a bit of water. So our pitta constitutions definitely tend to have more um, stronger digestive tract. We call it Agni in Ayurveda. They're more fired up. Um, and then you've got kapha. Kapha literally means what sticks. Um, it's the power of cohesion. And it's um, kapha constitution is made up of uh, predominantly water and earth. So very grounding constitution, tend um, weight more so, um, less movement in the body. Um, but but all each dosha, when you know your when you know your dosha and what it's dominated by, you can really then start to you know build more of a um, a specific nutritional program for yourself, also a self care program for yourself. So so when we think about vata, you know, I said that it's um it, it, it's really connected to movement in the body. Um, so our vata constitution tends to be more sensitive to cold. Um, also more prone, therefore, to dryness and fine lines. So moisturizing the body is really important. And when, when our vatas are out of balance, some simple things that you might see are um, bloatedness. You know, that's an example of, of, of vata out of balance. Gas, example of vata out of Think about the dryness in the body, constipation. You know, these are all things that many of us experience on, on you know, on a regular basis. So, so with Vata, we want to condition Vata with warmth. We want to condition Vata with nurturing. So when you're thinking about food for our Vata constitutions, we're thinking about things like stews. We're thinking about all those, that, those hearty meals, you know, that really fill us up and give us strength. Um, you know, we're thinking about also herbs that can also balance that constitution more so as well. You can certainly use more oils. Um, another ingredient for cooking with is ghee, which we use a lot of in Indian cooking and Ayurvedic cooking. It's, it's clarified butter. So that's a really good ingredient to cook with for our vata constitutions. So it's not that you've got to make different meal for everybody in the family. It just means that your specific meal can be slightly more individualized. Um, you know, can according, I ask, yeah. can I ask a question? So, um, for example, you have your constitution that you're born with, right? Um, mm. and, and by the way, everybody, we have um, um, a link on our website. We had uh, Dr. Matthew, who's an Ayurvedic doctor, did a little questionnaire for us where you can determine what your dosha is. Um, and I can share that with, uh, with the recording of this in the next um, email that we send out. You can kind of get to see what your, your dosha is. But you have that that you're you're born with um and then uh you kind of know what what you need so if you're like a strong pitta for example you have a general principle of what you need to eat or not to eat and you know all these principles that you talk about but say then you go through a period of your life so for example now you were talking about vata being out of balance i know i'm a pitta very much pitta but but the, what you were describing right now about Vata is what I'm feeling right now. Hmm. So how do you, you know, then you, you, do you step away from your normal constitution? Because there are times in your life or there are, you know, situations yeah. that push you off or move you towards another dosha. That's a great question. So absolutely. So we actually have two doshas. So you have your genetic constitution, which is your prakruti. That's what you're born with. That will never change. And that's where you are in your true essence. And um, that's where you are aligned to all the good things that make you feel fabulous. Uh, then you have your vikruti. So vikruti is when our bodies start to get out of balance. If prakruti and vikruti it's okay if they're slightly not, you know, not aligned. That's quite normal, the way that we live our lives in the Western world. But if, they're, if they are um, really sort of opposites or if they're really, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of 
div division between what you are genetically, your prakruti, and how you're showing up. Because today, you know, it, there's certain things going on in your life, or maybe, you know, there's certain stresses that you're having to deal with. There could be bereavement. You know, who knows? But your vikruti is your manufactured dosha. Now, if that's very separate from your prakruti, that's where that's where we start to see, um, you know, firstly common ailments, imbalances, but then that can lead to much more serious, you know, serious conditions. So the you know the idea is that really we want to nurture our vikruti so that we do feel as we should, that we do feel um, natural, you know, that we do feel at home with ourselves. Um, you know, I, you know, Stella, I know you live in London. I spent many years in London, living in London. And actually, my constitution is Kapha Vata. So London's not the best place for my constitution because it's so fast paced. And, you know, you've, you, 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 it's quite, um, it can be quite lonely and isolating as well. And, you know, us Kaffers like, <laughs> we like community. And um, I mean, how do you, and you were also saying, Stella, that at the moment you feel, um, do you know what your constitution is actually? I, I've had various diagnoses. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my main one is my main one is pitta pitta. It, it it's pitta vata, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's it it's pitta vata. So for everybody here, pitta is really about action, right? It's fiery, um, um, and usually if you're pitta. A lot of people in the Western world are pitta, right? Because of yeah. kind of uh, how we live and whatever. Yeah. But we, we usually have to like dampen the fire, right? On the cool yeah. down the fire on the on the um, pitta because we're fiery and we, you know, we're we're all about doing things. Um, and kapha is more grounded people, people who don't maybe have as much action. Which I don't know that. I, I can't understand that with you because you do so many things <laughs> <with your kappa. laughs> but kappa is usually people who are much more grounded slower um I'm, I'm really simplifying it here so correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. and vata are people who live in their heads in a lot think a lot analyze a lot very quick um yes this is all correct yeah uh, absolutely yes, absolutely okay. yeah um, very quick with their movements tend to feel colder, as you say, all of these things, a little bit more anxious. Um, so I'm generally Pitta, uh, but right now I'm feeling like a Vata. <laughs> so, but this yeah. is my point, how people can, you know, if, you, if this is what you are, and then you, yeah. you have situations that push you another way. So like as a Pitta, I have been told, um, drink lots of mint tea, cooling foods, these kind of things. Right now, I don't want that. I need, like as you say, not nurturing foods, stews, warming. I'm feeling really cold. All these, all these kind of things. So it's just interesting to see how that changes. Yeah, um, and it will, and it will, that. yeah, and it will change over time, over your lifetime as well. We also go through different phases in our life according to what we're, you know, the, the stages where we're at. So. Even, uh, you know, in childhood, we consider as a general that that's the kapha stage because that's all about childhood and nurturing and um, big open hearts and, um, you know, learning. And these are all, all kapha qualities. And then you actually go into the pitta stage of life, which is all about building and, you know, and, um, you know, Stella, you, you, you built a company, you know, so you, you need a lot of pitta energy to bring all of that together and, you um, and and manifest that into the world and then um, and then we go into our vata stage you know as we start to mature and our bodies start to degenerate somewhat um and and and, and so then and and then so again so this is your vic, this is your vikruti also changing through your life so it's very normal it's it's not that your genetic constitution and you know how you're rocking up today are totally aligned um but to feel that life you know lightness in life to feel the vibe to feel the happiness to feel the love to feel your infinite potential as a person you want them to be relatively balanced that's really the idea yeah. that's how and i would say it. when yeah. you say balance you mean like they so we have a bit of everything so we, yeah. we hence tridosha right so yes 
Yeah. So we have then a balance of Kapha, which is the groundedness, Pitta, which is the action, yeah. and Vasa, which is the, mm, the thick, what is the, the movement, yeah, the movement. movement. Yeah. 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 yeah, the movement. Okay, yeah. so that's like, and some lucky people are born like that, that are tridoshic. Yeah. Yeah, but having said that, that's not the aim. The aim isn't to be tridoshic. Oh, it um, no, the okay. aim isn't to have all elements in balance. It just okay. happens that some constitutions are, you know, that's their natural constitution. Um, okay. you know, there's there's no there's no there's no you know the idea isn't to have this this that be the perfect constitution. Um, it's it's to own what you are, you know, to because if we go back to the five elements, we're all made up of the five elements, ether, ether, space, air. If you feel, you know, think about the qualities of air when you when you, you know, go when you're, you know, a, a brisk, a brisk day, feel how that feels for you. Um, fire. So, you know, sunny day, how does that feel on you on your body? Um, water so you know those of you that enjoy water swimming in the water um how those the qualities are of of, of that um, element and then earth so all of these elements are actually part of us um and the doshas are formed from those elements so there's no perfect dosha it's we are we are unique and perfect um, you know, in every um, shape or form, the the key is to think about um, understanding your dosha so that you can just better manage yourself so that you can make, you know, better decisions for yourself, whether that be through diet, whether that be through self-care, whether that be through, you know, the wonderful trips that you like to go on and experience. And, you know, so this is where um, understanding your dosha really comes to life because, um, it gives you it, it gives you kind of the language, you know, to support maybe your inner world, but it's it's it can be expressed actually through, you know, through the doshas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think um I think Ayurveda, you know, it's, there's a question here from Mary about Ayurvedic retreats and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll come to her question in a sec. I think, you know, I've been on many Ayurvedic retreats because I love Ayurveda. And I, I, I tell everyone this story. Num a number of years ago, I went to, I was in India, I did Ayurvedic retreat and um, I did a big program and I came back and I felt amazing. I just absolutely, I think I was at the peak of my life there. I felt really, really good. And somebody said to me, have you had any work done? It was just hilarious. They thought wow. I'd had some work done. And I said, no, I've just done Ayurvedic treatments for every day for seven days. And um, it was fabulous. But you know, the beauty of the Ayurvedic retreats is that they're giving you the food, which is personalized to your dosha and yeah. all of that so you can do the whole integrated thing the issue is when you come back it's a lot of people because you know when, when you're on the retreat it you just go with the flow and you you eat what you're given and you show up for your treatments and you do your meditation and your yoga and all of those things yeah. the challenge is keeping it going yeah. when you come back and I'm very passionate about that because you know our trips are amazing of course they're a real reset opportunity um but that's what they are they're a reset opportunity so that when you come back you can continue to reap the benefits rather than to fall right back into um where you were so i you know i i feel quite strongly about really educating people to make it practical in their day-to-day -day lives if you can give us some um mm. Well, I, I do have a book on Ayurveda practices, actually. And um, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Sunita's book. Um, so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. But this, I you know, I received it this week, so I've been kind of flicking through it. But there seems to be got really good practical advice on that. Um, is, that is, uh, is there a section in there which is dosha specific? Yeah, there is. Yeah. So the way the book's written is actually um, I, I wanted as as the reader, I wanted you I wanted to really take the, the reader on a journey to understand the concepts first. And then in the last chapter, there is 
um, a dosha consultation which you can fill in and then there's specific um, daily routines that you can follow so so that that's what I you know that's how I would guide guide anyone who goes on an Ayurvedic retreat is that um, it's one thing yeah absolutely stellar it's amazing isn't it when you go through those seven days or those 10 days and your body feels purged almost and you've been looked after and you're fully nourished and all your tissues feel amazing and then but how do you carry that on at home? So actually, again, another fabulous concept in Ayurveda, really they have this system is sort of everything, is, is called Dhinacharya. And Dhinacharya is the daily routine. Um, so um, I'm not a purist in any way, so because I just don't think that works. Um, and especially, you know, for most of us living very busy lives, we have to be able to integrate um you know tools techniques resources into our lives that are easy and accessible and that we know that we can commit to um so if i was to say to somebody you know you've got to get up at five o'clock every morning and you've got to do it exactly like this it's for most people it's not going to work it's just not so so but what you can do is um in the book it does give you your daily routine and it's a very simple process of things that you can consider in your in your every day um, and where you can fit in um, certain aspects. So you know, one of the things is, is making also everything a ritual in your life, whether that's bathing in the morning, whether you have a shower, whether you have a bath, is actually bringing more awareness into that, into that bathing ritual. Um, again, uh, something else that you can uh, you know, bring more awareness into your body, which is also another cleansing tool, is to tongue scrape. Um, very, very simple, but both, you know, that cleansing element of the day, um, you can certainly have more awareness and connection there, which is already going to support your health. You're already going to feel more relaxed, more calm. Um, you can also then, if you have time in the morning, if for those of you that moisturize your skin, um, and if you don't, why don't you? <laughs> Swap to an oil five milliliters of oil using a specific body oil for your constitution. So if you're Vata, you want a relaxing oil, something with maybe lavender in it or sesame oil. You can use, you know, you can use, um, you can use carrier oils. Almond oil is great for all doshas. If you're Pitta, more soothing is very nice. Um, and if you're Kapha, slightly more energizing, but you can actually, very short, five minute self massage, so you're getting, you know, two for the price of one, you're moisturizing your skin, but you're also bringing in that beautiful ritual that's going to, um, you know, really revive your body, move the tissues, help with elimination, help with waste. Um, then in Ayurveda, with this daily routine, we consider when we think about exercise, we're thinking actually about holistic exercise. Um, so again, it depends on when you can fit it in, but if you can do just five minutes of movement, it might be some yoga exercises. It might simply be some stretching. Um, you know, if you've got, I even recommend to clients, if you've got some light weights, you can actually do some movements with some light weights and that'll bring in, you know, a little bit more, um, vibrant exercise for you. Tai Chi is also something that you can do literally five minutes. These things do not take much time. It's not like you've got to take a whole two hours to actually do this. Um, meditation is key. I, that's my absolute go to is that we all should be meditating, whether it's five minutes in a day, 20 minutes in a day or an hour. You know, it sets you up for the day. It's a complete detox of the mind. It connects you spiritually to yourself. Um, it just takes the edge off whatever is going on. Um, so whether that's, you know, if you like visualizations, maybe you're a Vata person. Um, no, Kapha, Kapha visualizations are very good because um, it gives you something to focus on. For our Vata constitutions, I would say focus on breathing. It's much more simpler. Vata constitution, the mind is already very active. And for Pitta, also, you know, certain breathing exercises, breathing into the belly, cleansing from the belly are all really good. Five minutes. Um, and then the other thing that is nice as part of this daily routine is also considering some sort of study. So that's changed so much from when our wonderful Vedias actually gave us this beautiful health system. You know, then it was the traditional 
uh, reading, um, you know, the, the, the spiritual books or, um, uh, you know, reading, um, you know, a sort of purpose driven content in that way. Now we've got podcasts, you know, now we've got um, quick five minute bite size chunks of content that we can connect with. We've got apps. Um, you know, you can uh, listen to, you know, you can listen to a, a book when you're driving your car. But just, you know, again, this is the, you know, that personal development aspect of growth, um, that you're learning something new, um, that you're hearing um, content from a different perspective. All of these things will help with your growth. Um, they'll help with your evolution. Um, and, you know, before you know it, you've, you've, you've collected so much more wisdom um, that it really starts to settle you and, 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 and help you go deeper into yourself. So yeah. they're all things that we can integrate. You know, none of that is hard. Well, this is what you get on an Ayurvedic retreat. Basically, I always tell people if they've never done an Ayurvedic retreat before and they want to go, I say, it's monotonous. It's routine. OK, so don't think you're going to go and do something different every day. It's all about the, the daily rituals and the daily routine. So the way it goes is you, you know, you have your daily treatments, you do your daily yoga, you do your daily meditation all at the same time. You eat at the same time every day. It's all about setting up that routine, um, which on, in, on a cumulative basis, brings you so much benefit you know and um it's not like wildly exciting and every day you're going to do something different it's just that cumulative routine and uh, you know it took me many many years I don't want to preach really because it took me a long time to get to this point where I am today where I've been able to implement these things in my daily life and all those things you talked about so um I do uh, I'm just going to share some of my tips <laughs> with everybody. So when when I'm in the shower, um, I start off with, um, yes, that's correct. It is the doctor won't see you now. When I'm in the shower, I start off with visualizing um, light coming down from into my body, through my head and going down into my body. It's just my own visualization. It's very soothing. It's very beautiful in conjunction with the water. I use, I do oil pulling. So I use coconut oil in my mouth and I um, I do that. And that really helps me um, because I did have um, gum issues. So that really helped me with that, like my, my, my dental hygiene. Um, but again, it's the ritualistic element of it. It's the daily routine. I do the, you know, the daily yoga, even if it's just 10 minutes, the stretching, um, daily meditation but it's become a part of my daily life. And it, I wish I had done this 20 years ago, guys. I really do, because it has had such an impact on my life. Um, but these are these ancient practices that they were trying to teach us to do. And we've become so distracted with the modern world and everything that's going on that we've forgotten these ancient practices that can really help us go go through this so thank you for yeah. sharing those yeah. those points I mean it's it's really effective yeah and there's an interesting story there because actually when they you know were starting to share this information with us it was um they were they were it's a beautiful story 52 Indian sages it said that they traveled up to the Himalayas they sat around together you know meditating but also and you know to 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 receive knowledge to receive wisdom that they could you know pass on um, and it said that these, you know, that they, that these Indian monks um, were, yeah, they were looking for new ways to support, you know, to support ev everyone. Um, and they were testing all of these things out on their own bodies. So, you know, they were, they were, they, they were doing, they were doing all of these things and doing them regularly and processing and processing and processing and, um, and um, you know, so they experienced the benefits um, and um, and then started to formulate it into the health system that we know today. And um, and I agree with you, Stella. I think a lot of this ancient knowledge, you know, it, it's it's almost you know, for many of us in the West, we go seeking it when something has has gone wrong, you know, or um, 
or we've had some sort of light bulb moment when actually the, the sooner you do it, you know, the, the sooner you get it into your life and integrate it into your life, the more it becomes a habit. And before you know it, you're just doing it without even thinking about it. Yeah. And I love your point about, OK, you know, we should we should spend a bit of time every day self, you know, in self-development and personal development. And that doesn't necessarily mean read, reading ancient texts or study. We have access to amazing stuff now, as you say, podcasts and so much information. I mean, everyone's here today. So this is part of your own kind of self-development. Congratulations. I mean, yeah. you're already doing it, you know, but this is this is it. I think the thing that most people struggle with is the food around when they go on Ayurvedic retreats, because when they come back, because they're kind of given the food and the food's very tasty and mm. it's usually um uh you know Indian or Indian yes. food yeah. and, um so yeah I think it's like learning those principles yeah. so that you can apply it to maybe a more of a western diet or using other you know ingredients around yeah, that. yeah. and I, you know I mean the uh, Sunita's book that Nicholas put that there um the doctor won't see you now we'll talk about that very briefly in a sec because I find that subject very interesting <laughs> the, the title very interesting but the um Sunita's book has those recommendations so you can um you can get get that sure yeah. there and just um, to add to that as well and it, and that's that is what it is once you learn the concept so in Ayurveda we've got you know we've got this idea that there should be six specific tastes in in each meal and um, that doesn't have to they don't have to be Indian ingredients or you know or you know Indian herbs and spices um you know foods that are grown here all have those qualities as well so again it's just it's just understanding um the qualities those you know what those tastes are um uh you know and understanding a bit about the effect that they have on our body and again the, the closer you get to your food the more you actually understand about have an awareness about the ingredients and what they're doing to your body, the, the more you'll, you know, you'll fall in love with it. And the easier it becomes then to actually make, you know, recipes that are suitable for your, for your constitution. So it's, I feel like it's, it's, it's all about falling back in love with nature, you know, um, and, and really, you know, expansion is inevitable then, because, you know, the, the deeper dive you do, the more you get connected to it. So that really is the way to do it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely about connecting with nature. Give us some examples of um, spices or herbs that we would have easy access to here. Or, I mean, look, we have easy access to everything here, especially yeah. uh, we're very blessed, I guess, even with the Indian spices. But give us some, like, three or four remedies or using spices, you know, for specific things. That yeah, well, the, the easiest ones um, that have become very popular in the West now, you know, turmeric is the go-to. Um, and, you know, when you think about turmeric, it's, it's anti-inflammatory, it relieves pain. You can easily use it in so many dishes. Um, and also you can take it if you have joint pain, if you have, you know, arthritis or, you know, anything to do, brittle bone issues, um, you know, a spoon of turmeric every day is really going to, it's really going to help. Um, so that's very easy, very user friendly. Another easy one is ginger. So also, you know, also um, ginger, also, um, you know, anti-inflammatory, but also very good for digestion. So, you know, I use ginger and turmeric in nearly all my cooking. Um, and, and also ginger, you can just chew. So you can just chew it. If you've got a bit of a, um, a dodgy stomach, you can cut a few pieces up and actually just chew it. Very easy. Um, and another formula that I would definitely recommend is something called um, Chuana Presh. Have you heard of Chuana Presh, Stella? No, no. no. Chuana Presh is kind of like, it's like Marmite. You either love it or hate it. It's, 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 um, it's a mixed formula of 60 different herbs. It's like a jam. Chuana Presh. So Chuana, C-H-A-W-A-N. Chuana, then A again, and then Presh, P-R-A-S-H. And um, it's it's absolutely incredible. Um, it literally is a rejuvenative. It, it gives all round health. And all you need to do is have a spoon a day. So um, 
so it's 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 kind of like it's all vitamins in one you know um that's uh, it's all different herbs yeah. it's all different herbs yeah yeah it's all different herbs it's quite potent um Yes, if, if you're if it's an unfamiliar taste for you, if you try it and you think, oh, I don't know if I can quite palate it, then, um, you know, then just just have some warm water afterwards or, you know, you can have a little bit of honey as well. That's fine. Um, but ultimately, it's um, it's it's got all the taste in it as well. So it's satisfied. It nourishes the tissues. It satisfies, it satisfies all these things that we want to satisfy um, nutritionally, literally in that jam. And um, it's fantastic for the aging process. You know, it nourishes the joints. Um, it calms the body and calms the mind. It's good for digestion. Um, it's good for implement. It's just good for good, 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 good. The list is the list is endless. So that's definitely something worth trying if you want to try something new and see if that works for you. Oh, yes, yeah, so I'll go for that. <laughs> At this point here, I'd like to say that. Um, Sunita, I can't believe you're a Kappa because you really do so many things, but Sunita has Kappa Vata, so there is a lot of Vata like, <laughs> in there. I think you're more like Pisso, honestly, because you just do so much. But anyway, um, Sunita has um, created a web in, lots of webinar um, uh, webinars on different levels, uh, different um, aspects of Ayurveda. She does have one for the introduction to Ayurveda, which she has kindly made available for free to anyone who's here. So if you would like to receive that, please email me on wellbeing at wellbeingescapes.com and I will send you the link so that you can access that and kind of have a deeper dive, as you say, into Ayurveda, because we've, you know, we've got limited time here, so we haven't been able to go too deep. And then also she has her book um, uh, that we've talked about, and you've created a new um, skincare brand, right? Yeah, it's actually, it's yes. So, yes, that. that's another hat I wear. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm the founder of um, a skincare brand. So we've, um, it's actually, this is a brand. It's called Neem, Neem by Sanita Passi. So the whole range is focused around this ingredient, Neem, which is amazing for skin. It's got so many skin benefits. It's also anti-inflammatory. It's also antifungal, and it's also a superfood. So you can actually drink it as a decoction. Um, it's very good for neem. Is excellent for anyone who's got um, all types of skin problems: eczema, psoriasis. Um, and so I wanted to develop this range so that we had um, we had the ingredient in um, in the different products. So we've got hair care, shampoo, conditioner. Um, it's wonderful for the scalp. Very, very good for, you know, particularly good for dry scalps as well. Um, and we have a hand and, a hand and a body wash. So you can pop that in the kitchen, pop that in the bathroom. Um, the pure neem oil is in this range and also the pure powder. So if you do want to have it, take it as a superfood. If you do want to um, try it as a decoction, I would recommend... Um, having a do do a 10 day program and then have a break you don't need to do more than 10 days but you literally make it into a 50 ml um, a shot um, and you drink that over 10 days and you'll really start to um, you know see the um, see the see the results from that and actually see how your skin um, detoxes we also have a body oil in there for those of you who want to bring in some self-massage there's a lovely balm which is excellent for nails um, it's really good for anywhere where you dry, have dry skin, such as elbows or, or feet as well. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, there's 10, there's wow. 10 products in that range. Yeah, so I, I, I had no idea you could ingest neem. I thought it was just topical. Where, where can people get that? So we've just, the, the new website, we've just launched a new website, which is www.neemsanitapassi.com. So you can get it through the site um and we'll also be online on various other platforms soon as well but at the moment directly through um through its own website and there's lots of information in there as well so if you want to learn more about the ingredient then go into the journal section that's where we're writing all the content and the blogs and we're giving the science um and also there's some recipes in there so if you do want to try and, and, and eat it um then there's this there's, there's some recipes in there there's going to be more um, 
Interestingly, Stella, in the south of India, they love this ingredient, whereas in the north, it's, mm. it's not suitable to that palate because it's very pungent, it's quite bitter. Mm. Um, but in the south, they really like food like that. So you can sprinkle a little bit onto your food as well. Um, but just to bear in mind that it's, it's quite a strong, it, it is quite strong. It is quite strong, not for the faint hearted, let's put it like that. <laughs> And coming back to your book, mm. before we sign off, because this um, is interesting, but the doctor won't see you now. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, without getting political, my dear, um, you know, the world is going through a transformation. And and when I wrote that, I, I'd already started to write the book, but when we went, basically when we went into lockdown, I really wanted to try and get this information out to as many people as possible. So I felt the urge to really um, complete it and, and publish the book um, so that people could focus on natural immunity so that they had the actual, so they had the information um, and they could, they could um, start to look at all the things that they can do themselves, um, you know, for their own health. So it's it's really it's it's a book for those that know that they can um, maybe be pulling their socks up um, and looking after themselves a little bit better. Um, you know, the, the, the health are health. There's a whole chapter on the NHS. So it's a real deep dive into where we're at. Um, you know, I've got many friends who work who are um, who work in the NHS. Um, there's one friend of mine who is a practitioner and she was. Um, working in a particular department for three months and actually came out of it um, because of because of that experience. And I do write about all of this in the book. So mm. it's really um, to help people. It's a time where for many years, it, you know, many of us in the West have handed ourselves over to the doctor. We've got a headache. I'm going to ring the doctor. I'll go to the doctor. I'll take a tablet. And yet there's so many things that we can do ourselves to be accountable for our own health. And um, I'm not, you know, the book isn't about saying that this is, this is, don't go the Western route, only go the Eastern route, but it is really just taking account of the fact that, um, you know, the, you know, as, as resources are becoming more limited in the NHS, uh, waiting lists are so long, um, how can we also, how can we limit the pressures on the NHS, what are the things that we can actually do ourselves? Um, how can we um, learn these tools, these techniques? What, what resources can we bring into our life to also share with our family? Um, so that actually we're not dependent on, you know, this model, which at the moment is, it's, you know, it's, 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 bro it's getting to broken. Yeah, yeah getting to broken point, yeah, 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 without yeah. a doubt, that's it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's really, you know, I wanted the book to give people confidence, you know, to yeah. give people confidence in themselves, um, to help them feel high spirited about what they can do themselves, to be excited about creating, um, you know, their own kitchen pharmacy, um, you know, in the web, in the course that um, you'll share with your, um, uh, your uh, attendees. Um, there's actually a whole module on um, what you need, you know, to actually start to, you know, make some of the things that I've talked about in this session as well. So it's it's all about finding finding ways to um, to create that Ayurvedic kitchen, you might say, to bring in these lotions, these potions, all of these lovely tools. But also one of the things in Ayurveda is the kitchen. We always say in Ayurveda, the kitchen really is the heart of the home you know it's the heart of the home and it should feel like the heart you know it should red pulsing you know full of love um and um and that's that really for me that's where western medicine completely falls flat because you know your average doctor hasn't even had one day's training in nutrition and yet nutrition is the key to so many of the ailments that we're experiencing in the west if we just get that right um, we, uh, you know, we, you know, we'll, you'll, you'll find that um, you, um, you'll experience greater health and well-being just naturally, and you'll know what to do. You know, you'll know what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what to tweak. Um, it's also relevant. So, so there's no conversation of that in Western medicine. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I'm hoping that's changing slowly. Yeah. You know, look, they do. 
all doctors take the Hippocratic oath and Hippocrates uh, first, one of, the, one of the things he said was, let food be thy medicine, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, this is, we're, we're going back to those ancient ways. And that's not to say that um, modern Western uh, practice is bad. It's not at all, but it we need to complement it, of course, Compliment. with some yeah. of this ancient wisdom. Um, well, we've reached our time. I There's so much information that you have. I think we could spend hours talking about Ayurveda because it's so, I mean, how can you summarize Ayurveda yeah. in an hour? No chance. You know, we need several sessions, but um, well, I'm sure we'll have you back and we can talk about, you know, something maybe we can drill down into something else uh, around Ayurveda. But uh, thank you so much for coming along and um sharing your wisdom and it's just uh it's great i hope um i hope you can keep spreading the word sunita because uh, people need it it's great and um i'm just gonna i've like i've shared in chat i'm just gonna share i've shared in chat um sunita's book um the name of the um her products and the website and I will also share this is on our website which shows you kind of it's a little questionnaire on doshas um that Dr Matthew did for us if, if it will go but no it won't go I'm having a okay we'll get that in <laughs> somehow uh, I don't know control enter to send it says okay it's not going okay well never mind I'll um I know what it is. It's everyone. Okay. Here we go. It's out there. So if you want to click on that and uh, look at look at your own um, uh, dosha, that's great. Thank you everyone for coming along. Have a wonderful weekend, rest of weekend, great week ahead. Sunita, thank you. And um, speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank